1.1 day three, analyzing categorical data. Uh, the first part here, let's go ahead and fill in these first two blanks. It says when a data set involves two categorical variables, we begin by examining the counts or percents in various categories for one of the variables. Sort of follow logically. We we'll start by looking at one variable at a time. We don't start by looking at them together. So uh, we'll just make it easy on ourselves, look at one at a time. The next definition there, uh, a two-way table, and you've actually seen these and dealt with these a bunch before. A two-way table describes two categorical variables organizing counts according to a row variable and, you guessed it, a column variable. In case you were wondering, rows go like this sideways, columns go like this vertically. So we've got an example of a two-way table right here. Uh, this was a survey done among young, young adults. We looked at the different genders um, and their responses to this question about what are your chances of getting rich uh, as you get older. So you can see the responses from male and female here. Uh, they could have said almost no chance, some chance but not probably, a yeah, 50-50 chance, a good chance, or they're almost certain that they're going to be rich when they're older. The first question here actually says Q2. What are the variables described by this two-way table? So uh, there's two variables. You can look at either the row variable or the column variable, uh, those being either gender, column variable, or the responses to this question, uh, the getting rich survey. So let's go to the next piece here. I'm going to have to scroll down. How many young adults were surveyed? So young adults would include everyone that was actually in the survey. Where do we go for that information? Well, uh, let's see. These are the total responses from each row. Total number of females, total number of males. So the table total, total number of people altogether would be this 4826 number right here. So that's the total number of people that were actually included in the survey. So let's go ahead and mark that down. The total for the table uh, was 4826, and those are the young adults that were in the survey. The next definition here, uh, the marginal, and I abbreviated, marginal distribution. It says one of the categorical variables in a two-way table of counts is the distribution of values of that variable among all individuals described by the table. Okay, so what does that mean for us? First of all, it says a two-way table of counts. And then one quick note to make regarding counts is that oftentimes it's better to use percents instead. It says percents are often more informative than counts, especially when comparing groups of different sizes. Do we have that here? Let me see. Let's go back. So yeah, if you look at the total number of males surveyed versus the total number of females surveyed, um, it wouldn't be fair to just say, for example, a 50-50 chance that people responded to that. Oh, there was more males, so that's pretty convincing. More males think they have a 50-50 chance. Well, that's not quite fair because somehow when you surveyed all those people, you surveyed more males than females. So you might have bigger counts in all the columns, but the percentages might actually be more the same. So in this case, since we surveyed a different number of males than we did females, yeah, it would be fair to consider the percentages as opposed to the counts. And then the marginal distribution, I want you to think about that root word there, the margin. So if you could write things in the margins, which would mean like on the side or underneath, you think about the margins of a page, um, you could write the percentages next to the variable. That'll help you think of what a marginal distribution is. So how do we examine a marginal distribution? It says, use the data in the table to calculate the marginal distribution, and that's going to be in percentages, right? We write the percents alongside the table in the margin of the row or column totals, so percentages of the totals. And then we make a graph to display the marginal distribution. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. It says examine the marginal distribution of chance of getting rich. So let's go ahead and write, I mean we could write these in the margins uh, next to the actual distribution in the two-way table, but let's go ahead and write the response and the percent. So 
the response means the response to the survey. And we had a few different options for that, right? Actually, we had more than a few. So there was almost none. Some kids said they had some chance of getting rich. Some kids said a 50-50 chance. Some kids said they had a good chance. And some kids were really confident they said almost certain. Again, we could just go right next to that table and write these percentages in, in the margin. So think about that for your marginal distribution. So what percent of kids, or young adults I should say, said almost none? Notice I didn't ask you male or female. And if we look at this table again, if I just said what percent, I don't care what their gender is, what percent said almost none, the right calculation you'd say, how about 194 out of the total amount? Same thing for the next choice. What percent said some chance, but probably not? Uh, I didn't care about their gender, I just want to know how many young adults or what their percentage was, so that would be 712 out of the total. So that means for each one of these, if we want to know the percentage of the whole, they're all going to be out of that table total amount, the 4826 number. So we can make a fraction to calculate our percentages. So how many responded? Almost none. To get our percent, we do 194 out of 4826. And then for some chance, it was 712. 50 50 was 1416. Good chance, 1421. And almost certain, 1083. All those red numbers, if we did this right, we didn't make any mistakes. Those should actually add up to 4826. All right, let's go ahead and calculate those percentages. Um, don't worry, I got this one for you if you don't have a calculator handy. This is 4.0, 14.8, 29.3, 29.4, and 22.4. There's our percentages. So graphically, um, again, we humans are visual creatures, so sometimes looking at a list of numbers doesn't do us a whole lot of good, but when we start to see graphs, and we can make out the bars relative to the size of other bars, it helps us out a ton. So here is the marginal distribution graph. If you notice the percentages that go with each one of these, right? So the vertical variable here, the y variable would be the percentage, and then you see the chances or the responses underneath. Just like any good statistician, we know how to label this graph. Let's go ahead and give it a title. This is the chance of being wealthy by age 30, and these are our responses from our young adults on the y-axis here, those are the percentages that correspond with each response. So let's go ahead and give those some context too. This is our survey response, and we could say young adults here as well to make that even more clear. And then we have our percentages on the y-axis. Okay, so we've got marginal distribution. Again, think about you could just pencil these into the margins next to, uh, next to the table. So again, if I went back here, I could have easily just went down the side and wrote those percentages in next to the table. And you can think about that as being the margin of the page. The other way I could have done it, maybe not as interesting, is done, okay, well, what percent of females were in the survey? And then what percentage of males were actually represented in the survey? So I could have done a marginal distribution right here and done percent of females included and percent of males included. That would have been if we did it for the column variable. So let me just scroll down here. Um, this next definition, we've done marginal distribution. Now it's conditional distribution. So the conditional distribution of a variable describes the values of that variable among individuals who have a specific value of another variable. So the word conditional, you just have to think, they meet a certain condition. So individuals that meet a certain condition will be included in our conditional distribution. How do you examine or compare these things? Okay, uh, part one, select the rows or columns of interest. For example, maybe your condition is the young adults that said 50-50 chance. Part two, use the data in the table to calculate the conditional distribution, that's in percentages, of the rows or columns. And part three, because we're visual creatures, we want to make a graph to display the conditional distribution. So we're going to use a side-by-side -side bar graph which we're all used to, or there's another thing called a segmented bar graph that would work also. So a conditional distribution is way more specific than that marginal distribution thing. I'm only looking for individuals who meet some certain criteria or meet some certain condition. Example two says calculate the conditional distribution of opinion among males. 
examine the relationship between gender and opinion. So conditional distribution. This time, um, I'm only going to look at the males. So that's my condition. And we're going to look at uh, the different opinions, how they're distributed over just the males. And then we're going to do it for the females also so we can compare the two distributions. So let's start with, we can make a female column here and a male column here. So we're going to grab the percentages. We're going to, we're going to do the males first here. We're going to grab the percentages uh, under each type of response. So the total number of males was 2459. So if I look at the percentage of males that said almost no chance, I would just say 98 out of 2459. So if I focus on the male column only, that's my conditional, um, well, that's my condition that I'm going to meet. How were the males distributed? So if I start with almost no chance, 98 out of 2459, that should give me 4.0%. And then let's keep going down here. What's the percentage of males that said some chance? If I do 286 out of the total, 11.6%. And let's go ahead and get the rest of those up here. So these are the percentages for the males. That's how they're distributed. So right away, if I asked you, what percentage of males are almost certain that they're going to be rich? Well, we already calculated that percentage. That was 24.3%. Where'd that come from? Well, that was just 597 over the total. And then how about for the females here? Let's, let's use the females as our condition, make our conditional distribution. So now, for those percentages, we're using 2367 as the total. So for the females, how are they distributed? What's their conditional distribution? So going down the list, 96 over the total, so on and so forth, should look something like this. 4.1, 18.0, 29.4, 29.5, 29.6, should roughly add up to 100% for the females and for the males. If you get 99.9, .9, well, that was just some rounding error that occurred. So conditional distributions are actually more specific than the marginal ones. The marginal ones, you just put them outside the table over here or under here, for example. Conditional distributions, we focus on some group that has a specific condition or they fall under a certain criteria. For example, we could do the conditional distribution for the males. We did that. We saw how the males were distributed among the survey answers. And then we did the same thing for the females. So we made two different conditional distributions based on gender. And I don't know if yours is quite as colorful, um, but this is a segmented bar graph. So taking those values that we got in the table, those percentages, if we put them on a scale from 0 to 100%, how much does each response lock up for the males? How much does each response lock up for the females? Uh, and this is kind of nice. Personally, I prefer just the regular bar graph. Uh, they're easier to make, and I like to compare the heights of the bars directly. But every now and then, this, this isn't so bad either. So we have to be able to read both of them either way. OK, and something else we have to become proficient at is being able to read graphs, understand them, and examine them. So basically say something um, statistically relevant, right? something worthwhile. So do we notice any trends? And that's what the question asked. We're going to examine the difference uh, between the genders here. Do we notice any trends, um, any striking departures, or are we about similar in some cases? So one thing for sure I can see, and maybe because it's color-coded, uh, the red here for the males is bigger than the area for the red for the females. Uh, it looks like this purple area up top also bigger for the males than it is for the females. And those correspond to almost certain for the purple, and red was the good chance response. So we can say, in general, it looks like the males are more confident. So that's, that's one thing worth noting here. Um, looks like there was, there was a higher percentage of males that responded with almost certain and a higher percentage of males that responded with just good chance in general. So uh, men are somewhat more optimistic than women about their future income. And I can say men and women and not boys and girls because it said young adults, right? Okay. 
just making sure I'm good there. Now, uh, do I know this for a fact to be true in all cases? Is that absolutely true? No. So what am I making this claim? What am I basing this claim on? Right? What knowledge do I have that says men are somewhat more optimistic than women about their future income? Uh, I'm making that claim based on this sample, right? So judging from this graph, based on this sample, it looks like men are more optimistic than women about their future income. So in general, uh, it looks like, based on this graph, uh, men have a better feeling about their chance of becoming rich uh, in the future. So a couple other noticeable differences. One of them, for me, this green block here is smaller on the male side than it is on the female side. So that means the percentage of people that responded some chance, that would be less for the males than it was for the females. So that's something worth noting. I see a difference between the males and the females. Let's note that difference. So men were less likely to say they only had some chance of becoming wealthy. And we can be more specific than that. Let's provide some summary stats, right? We have the stats up here in this table, the percentage of men versus percentage of women. So we have 11.6% for the men versus 18% for the women. So we can actually, anytime we can provide those summary stats, that helps our argument. Instead of just saying men are less likely, we can actually give the percentages. The 50-50 chance to me, and I mean, like just making a visual comparison, those blocks look like they're roughly the same size. Uh, and then we already said men are generally more optimistic. So let's get some summary stats behind those. So we can say men are more likely to say both good chance, they had a 30.8% versus the females 28%, and almost certain, they had 24.3% to the females 20.5%. So we've got our three apparent differences. We noted those. Uh, and then just to be thorough here, what about the other categories that we haven't talked about? Those actually look like they're roughly the same. So I think the other ones are almost no chance. So that's the, the blue there at the bottom. Those, I think they were about 4%. And then the 50-50 chance, that's the yellow in the middle. Uh, those are approximately the same for both genders. They look about the same on the graph and when we calculated those percentages in this table up here, they were roughly the same. All right, so we introduced two-way tables, and the two other big takeaways from this one are marginal distribution and conditional distribution. That's all for these notes. I'll see you in class.